Today I wanted to discuss how neutrons are proton plus an electron. We know that a neutron forms when a proton combines with an electron, and then a neutron decays to a proton and an electron. So of course protons must be made and neutrons must be made of quarks, three quarks. Of course not. The first assumption should be, since we have proton and electron, they combine and then they separate, it's a proton and an electron. That, as scientists, should be our first attempt at describing a neutron. And one thing we know about protons, or at least I do, is that all the proton's properties, its charge, its spin, angular momentum, magnetic moment, and mass are all due to the quantum shell at its charge radius. And we know that a proton has a shell because of scattering experiments. There have been lots and lots of scattering experiments and lots and lots of measurements of this charge radius. And Richard Feynman came up with the idea that this radius was populated with partons and that these partons form a structure, and this structure could deform inelastically and causing scattering. Now we suspect, as quantum field theories develop more, that these are quantum fluctuations, that these are pairs of quantum fluctuations that inhabit this shell within the proton, at the surface of the proton. So you can think of a proton as being a shell of polarized dipoles. And these dipoles are rotating because we know that the magnetic moment is equal to a shell the size of the proton's charge radius rotating at the speed of light. Which means each of these little dipoles is rotating at the speed of light, making it look like the whole thing is rotating at the speed of light. When it's really all just the little dipoles rotating more or less in unison. So we have this spherical rotating structural thing that forms the proton. No quarks re required to get any of the properties of the proton. And I did a video on this that I'll link below. And the electron is the same way, but with the electron, instead of a radius at about 0.9 times 10 to the minus 15 meters, or 0.9 femtometers, you have a radius that's half the Compton wavelength of the electron. So it's about 1.2 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, or picometers. So it's 1,300 times larger. And it's also rotating at the speed of light at that radius. And its properties also emerge entirely from the shell structure that must exist at the quantum uh, Compton radius of the electron. the magnetic moment, the mass, the spin, all the properties of the electron emerge from something at the Compton radius. The scattering can only be due to a shell of quantum fluctuations at this Compton radius because the magnetic moment and, and mass emerge from that. So we have a case of two different spinning shells. We have one huge one and one small one, and you can see like two spinning tops. They're going to bounce off each other, so they, they won't naturally merge, which is why we don't see protons merely fall into electrons because of electromagnetic attraction. Because you have these rapidly rotating shells, they, they just don't merge, unless you have some sort of quantum jump. And I've discussed this in previous videos, how a quantum fluctuation, electron-positron fluctuation, can allow an electron to jump into the proton to form a neutron. And then that can be reversed so the electron can jump out of the neutron. You don't need any fancy process. You don't need W and Z bosons to do that. All you need is a quantum fluctuation, electron-positron, or even a, maybe a proton, any proton quantum fluctuation. But what happens, because both of these are spinning at the speed of light at their boundary, 
the speed of light limit is what sets the size of the structure. It can't get bigger because of the speed of light limit. So that's why it's the size it is for the rotation it has. So once an electron's center is centered inside the proton's shell, then the electron can no longer maintain its Compton-sized shell. It has to collapse, and it has to collapse down to the radius of the proton because of the speed of light limit. So we ultimately end up with an electron that's been reduced in size to the size of the proton. So you simultaneously have these two structures superimposed with each other. Now I haven't worked out the details of what that looks like and how we end up with the magnetic moment we do. But we do know from experiments that we get a charge distribution that goes positive at first and then goes negative and then goes back up to neutral. And it's positive at, at around 0.3 femtometers. So inside the shell area, there's a region of positive charge. And this can occur because the rate of polarization is more rapid in the proton, which causes the proton to be smaller, normally. And while the rate of polarization of the electron is normally slower because it's been reduced in size, it's more rapid, but it's still not as rapid as a neutron. And that's why we don't just have a flat neutral line here, because we're looking at real polarization and real dipoles. And that tells us that if something has a positive charge and is positive matter, it is polarized more rapidly than something that's negative charge and positive matter. So there's some connection between the electric charge and the matter and any matter orientation that causes a different rate of polarization within the electron and the proton. And that's something else that we need to work out. We, we need to learn more about how positive and negative electric charge and matter and antimatter are related to each other because it appears that they emerge together, that there's a connection between the two that can't be separated. So we can think of a neutron essentially just being an electron popping into a, a proton and then popping back out again. We don't need to make it any more complicated. We definitely don't need to have quarks to explain any of the properties or neutron decay or, uh, or neutron being made by combining the proton and electron. And we don't need W and Z bosons to explain that either. So all of this can be explained simply as a mechanism where electron and protons combine and separate. Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, please like it and share it with your physicist friends and subscribe so you see more of my videos in the future. And I also have a book on particle theory, Goodbye Quark's the Union Theory. And you can read that if you want to read more about proton-electron structure and how all the unstable resonances form as onion compounds. And I also have my two books on quantum field theory. And if you buy one of my books, I'm a retired independent researcher, so that helps support me and helps me allow me to continue to do research and produce videos. And so I appreciate all the support. So thanks for watching.